Hello friends, I am filled with cheesy goodness, and today we are taking a look at Action Toys Steam Robo, otherwise known as Loco the Gobot here in the United States. I've been looking forward to this figure from Action Toys for quite a while, at least a year, ever since they first showed the guy, or at least a prototype of the dude, at a toy convention. Uh, Loco was one of my all-time favorite Gobots, just because he was a train. I mean, how many steam locomotives other than Astro Train and Loco can you name? I picked this figure up over at the Big Bad Toy Store. It is currently available for order, so if you really do want to get it and don't feel like watching my review, go ahead and over there. Follow the link in the description. So taking a look at the figure up close first, he is modeled in black, red, and silver, and some yellow highlights here and there. He comes with one major accessory, that's being the gun wielded in his left hand, and he is this number D5147. The head sculpt is pretty good and it is modeled after a Japanese conductor's cap. Not a USA train conductor, but a Japanese train conductor. Though he does have a very striking resemblance to Kickback. You know, the Insecticon, that frowny face. Or maybe it was Thundercracker or Skywarp. Either way, that is a very Transformers Decepticon-esque face. Now this little dude's D5147 is well, to be honest, I'm not sure what it means. I've looked it up, I've looked up 5147, and that is the badge number of a Datsun Fairlady Z from the same time. Also, the 5047 is a diesel engine from OOBS, or OBBS, one of those. So, my Googling hasn't really yielded the best results. If you're a train buff and you know what the D5147 is, let me know down in the comments or hit me up over on Twitter, at Bolt Matrix. Either way, he's a stellar looking little bot. Height-wise, Steam Robo is just a smidge shorter than a current Siege Deluxe Class figure. But Steam Robo has some excellent posability. Head can look down that much and look up that much and does swivel side to side on the ball on a ball joint, though it is really, really tight after you get them looking one way. But I mean, look, the, the shoulder pylons are just gonna be in the way. I mean, it's like a Evangelion that way. Ball joint in the shoulder, swivel just underneath that, hinge joint for the elbow, and then there is a hinge joint for the transformation into locomotion mode. Locomotive mode, I mean. The gun is okay. It, it looks like a futuristic pea shooter, but it's, it's pretty nicely detailed. Unfortunately, in robot mode, there's nowhere to store the gun, nor is there a place to store the gun in vehicle mode. There is torso swivel, ball joint in the hip, can go forward and back a full 90 degrees, can do the complete splits, and can do the splits both ways, swivel just underneath the, hint, the hip, ratcheting knees, and then a little ball joint for the toes. And that's actually important for the transformation, which we'll get into here in a, in a minute. While you can pose this guy pretty darn well, I have noticed that a bunch of the joints, specifically the ball joints in the legs and the swivels, are a little bit too loose. They're just at that weird point where they're, if it was a little looser, they would be completely, you know, noodles, but they're not. And I think a little bit of uh, maintenance would go a long way to fix the, just what I think is just a little bit too loose, much looseness in these joints. The only thing I have to complain about truly with the posability are the fists. They just move in and out way too easily for the transformation or because they're trying to do the transformation. They do swivel. They do have a little bit of swivel to them, but not much. It's, it's barely noticeable. And you know what I so didn't notice? They're actually on ball joints, not on swivels. Steam Robo also comes with another accessory that plugs into, well, the figure's butt that allows it to be stood up or connect to the stand that the figure comes with. All of these Machine Robo figures come with their own little unassembled stands in the box, though they are very floppy. I'm not a huge fan of the stands, but I do appreciate that they come in the box. I just use this $5 stand that I got off Amazon it works fine. If 
well, even if it's a little bit big for this type of figure. But I think it works and you could get quite a bit of decent poses. The only issue with the posability is the fact that, well, I mean, the head and those shoulder pylons, they really do get in the way. Transformation for Steam Robo is a ton of fun. To start off with, we're going to come to the front of the figure, flip up the little D5147 just up in front of his face, come to the side of the shoulders and pull the shoulders fold outwards, thus unpegging it from the head and fold them all the way down. Then we could take the entire top part where the head is and unpeg it from the rest of the body, which is actually kind of hard to do because these pegs are in here pretty tight. So I just kind of reach inside the pylons and unpeg them gently. I said gently. Dang it, I'm doing this gently, behave. Once the red pylons are unpegged, we fold it up all the way, straightening out the little smokestack. And you can see the front of the engine there, fold it forward and flip it around and then peg it into place and then turn the entire torso to the left of the figure and then drop the front of the train down, flipping out the little hook we have in the front. Then we can take the arms, fold the fists up into the forearms, turn the forearms so that the little smokestacks are pointing up, extend it all the way out, and this little hinge will actually go into this groove, and then just kind of fold it in and snap everything into place. And there we go. And now we have Gerwalk Tank, or if you follow me on Twitter, I kind of pseudo did the transformation and had it more like a Gerwalk tank. Next, come down to the legs and at the thigh swivel, turn it so that the red lights are pointing towards the back and then towards the front and then collapse the knees like that, like it's doing the squats. Come to the inside of the legs and unfold the, well, the inside of the leg all the way down, turn the toe so that the red component is facing with the rest of the red lines. Do the same thing on the other side. And then fold it up and flip it around. And the red toe will actually peg into the side of the train. Do the same thing on the other side. Flip it up, snap it down, bring it around, get it all pegged into place. And then lastly, we're gonna flip down the front of the train like that. And that's it, Loco in his locomotive mode. Now this is a very tiny locomotive mode. Eh? I'm not gonna lie there, but I like it. I really do. It's, it's so nice. It's so sweet. And it's so blurry right now on my little camera. <sighs> I'm still working on figuring out what to do with, th with this camera. Anywho, this is a great little train mode. I think this is an absolutely fantastic little train mode. Though it feels real small. I'm not gonna lie, it feels very similar to Tank from the Action Toys Machine Robo line. Just very, very tiny. And as I said, I get some real Brave Series vibes from this thing. I mean, we just need a Captain Shark and, you know, a giant cannon to go on the front of the train. I absolutely adore this little train robot. I, I, I do. Is it perfect? Hmm. I think it could be a little bit stiffer in some spots. And no, that is not a euphemism for something. It's such a just joyful little figure, if that makes any sense. It, it's such fun. And we don't get things like this on the Transformer side anymore. We just don't. And that's a shame because Hasbro can learn a lot here. They can learn a whole lot especially when it comes to directions. Now look at these directions. Clear, concise, easy to follow directions, very nicely pictured. You, have ex you know exactly what's going on. And even if you don't, you can intuit most of it. They have done an excellent job with these directions. Oh, and this is the little stand that I was talking about that the figure comes with. Hasbro, you need to make directions like these. You really, really do. So as you can see, pretty much perfect directions. 
and a pretty much perfect figure. There's not anything really bad I could say about it other than the minor little flaws that I pointed out earlier. If you are a fan of trains, and you are a fan of giant robots that turn into trains, you need to pick up Steam Robo, or Loco the Renegade, whichever you want to call it. So folks, hit that link down in the description, head over to Big Bad Toy Store, and pick up your very own Steam Robo. It's a lot of fun, I think you'll like him. And while you're there, if you're on the fence about what other machine robo figures you might want to pick up, I suggest picking up Tank and Stealth Robo. Those are my two other favorites in this line so far. I think they're great figures and they are a ton of fun. There are more Action Toys Machine Robo figures coming out, thankfully. Check over at Toy Grind, uh, aka Thu Adams. He did a review for a figure that hasn't even gone up for pre-order yet. In fact, that figure is on my short list of things I need to own. So yeah, as I said, head over to Big Bad Toy Store, pick this guy up. He's totally worth it. What do you folks think of Steam Robo? Let me know down in the comments and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you hated it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well while you're there and the bell so you know when a new video is out because Lord knows YouTube isn't going to tell you. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Paul Matrix and I will catch you next time.